Chapter 22 Feeding Your Baby Caring for and feeding a young baby is a responsibility and a privilege. To watch his body grow and his mind develop always brings satisfaction that only a successful mother and father can know. As a parent, you also must grow and learn along with your baby. To succeed in your new and challenging task, you must give him coverage and strength to face the world for himself. Too much babying is bad for any child. He needs your love and understanding, but he must also develop confidence in himself. In other words, he needs mother love, but not smother love. Stern, rigid rules are not necessary in bringing him up. Treat him as a human being, not as a machine. Don't watch the clock too closely in feeding and caring for him. Remember, millions of babies were brought up very well long before alarm clocks were invented. So, relax a little, and give your baby a chance to grow in his own way as much as possible. And do not be too concerned about other people's opinions. You can never please everyone, regardless of how much you may try. In caring for your baby, you must draw your own conclusions and act accordingly. If you have any questions or problems, it is always wise to discuss them with your doctor. Baby's Growth Babies grow fast. For the first few days after birth a baby may lose a few ounces, but he is usually back to his birth weight by the 10th day. After this he should gain from 4 to 7 ounces a week for the first 3 months, provided he gets enough to eat. By the time he is 6 months old he should be double his birth weight, and at the end of one year he should have tripled it. This fast rate of growth obviously demands a nourishing diet. 170 Feeding Your Baby Breastfeeding If possible, plan to feed your baby yourself. True, there are many fine formulas on the market, but human milk is best for human babies. If you nurse him yourself, he will probably have fewer stomach upsets, less diarrhea, and almost no constipation. He will also have less skin trouble. Breastfeeding has other important advantages as well. You will feel better yourself, your pelvic organs will return to normal more quickly, and your skin will improve. Many of the loveliest women in the world have breastfed their babies. This is one of nature's ways to keep a woman young and beautiful. Breastfeeding is so much easier than bothering with formulas and bottles. But you must be sure to take sufficient fluids yourself every day, particularly milk. The calcium in the milk is needed for your baby's bones and teeth, and also to protect your own system. You can take milk in the form of custards, cream soups, milk drinks, and in many other ways. Your diet should also contain a liberal amount of vegetables and some extra protein in the form of beans, dolls, peas, eggs, and cheese. You may also add some lean meat, if you desire. How often should you feed your baby? As often as he desires certainly at least every 3 or 4 hours. The more milk he gets from the breast, the more you will have, provided your fluid intake is sufficient. How can you tell whether he's getting enough? Here's a simple way to find out. Weigh him just before you feed him, and again right after. The difference in the weight will let you know how many ounces of breast milk he is getting at each feeding. If he fails to show a weight gain of 4 ounces each week, you may need to give him 1 or 2 bottles of formula each day. This should only be done after he has nursed his full time at the breast. If your breasts become swollen and painful, apply warm, moist packs 2 or 3 times a day. Follow the directions shown on pages 96 and 97. Take care not to burn the skin. Gentle heat will usually relieve any congestion in the breast. If the nipples become sore, carefully sponge them with rubbing alcohol, and then rinse with clean water. If they feel heavy, use a breast binder for protection. Keeping Fit 171 Keeping Physically Fit Every woman likes to feel proud of her figure, especially after she has had a baby. A fat and flabby figure is no credit to anyone. Too many women lounge around, avoiding any real effort, while at the same time eating too heartily. The sensible woman will not do this. 
she will avoid overeating and will take the necessary exercises to rebuild her figure, soon after the baby is born. Here are a few exercises that you can do at home. 172 Feeding Your Baby Postnatal Exercises 173 174 Feeding Your Baby Preparing Your Baby's Formula If you do not have enough milk, or if you happen to be sick, you will have to feed your baby by formula. This involves more trouble than breastfeeding, because the formula must be mixed in the right quantity. When fed to the baby, the mixture should be room temperature. Today there are a number of excellent baby formulas available from which to choose. Your doctor will advise you on this. Most baby formulas are made up from some form of cow's milk which has been specially prepared for this purpose. Powdered milk has some real advantages over fresh cow's milk. It is protected well in sealed containers. It is more easily digested than ordinary cow's milk. In making up your own formula you merely add 2 ounces of boiled water to each level tablespoon of powdered milk. The directions for doing this are usually printed on the container. Breast milk is sweeter than cow's milk. This means that to AP proximate the taste of human milk you must add to a formula prepared from powdered milk some sweetening substance. For this purpose you can use brown sugar, milk sugar, honey, corn syrup, or whatever your doctor may recommend. For a very young baby, here is the standard formula sufficient for one day. 7 tablespoons powdered milk 14 ounces of boiled water. 2 tablespoons of honey, glucose, lactose, or other sweetening. The baby will usually take about 3 ounces of formula with each feeding at first, gradually increasing the amount as he grows. If you use one of the specially prepared formulas, just follow the printed directions on the label. Don't be too rigid about the time of feeding. The baby will let you know when he is hungry. Be careful not to contaminate the bottles, lest in so doing you jeopardize your baby's health. To avoid this, be sure to clean the bottle thoroughly after each feeding and boil it along with the rubber nipple for about 2 minutes to kill germs. The greater care you take with the bottles and nipples the less trouble your baby will have with digestive upsets. The Baby Formula 175 It is important to always keep your baby's utensils scrupulously clean, free from flies and vermin. Also be sure your own hands are clean. Use plenty of soap and water, and then rinse them with clean water. You would be surprised how many germs can be found on clean hands. If you prepare the baby's formula from powdered milk, it is wise to thoroughly clean the top of the can before opening it. This will prevent germs falling into the baby's food. Always use boiled water when preparing the formula. Following a few simple steps such as these may save you many trips to the doctor. During feeding, always hold the baby in your arm, preferably in sitting position. This will protect his ears and nasal passages from infection. Let him take as much food as he wants, but no more. Overfeeding always causes trouble. Hold him close to you while feeding. 176 Feeding Your Baby To give him a feeling of security and he will soon look forward to meal times with delight. After feeding, lay the baby over your shoulder for a few minutes in a semi-upright position, to bring up any excess air he may have swallowed. Then lay him down in his bed, preferably on the right side. Let him sleep as long as he will, especially during the first few weeks. Keep yourself calm and quiet so he will feel that the world is a friendly place. The love you give him now, he will return to you through all the days of his life. Colic Colic is a painful stomach condition, probably due to the baby having swallowed too much air while feeding. This distends the stomach and interferes with normal digestion. When the baby is lying flat he cannot expel the air, but if you hold him in a vertical position, the swallowed air usually comes up fairly quickly and this relieves the pain. Experienced parents have known this for a long time, for colic is no new problem. Some years ago a group of physicians in public health service noted that colic in infancy was very rarely seen among the Navajo Indians of North America, owing apparently to the Navajo habit of carrying their infants in a vertical position. The baby is bound securely to a well-upholstered board placed at his back, 
leaving his arms and legs free. This upright position allows the baby to bring up the swallowed air without any difficulty. Noting this, the doctors devised our modern plastic carrying boards as useful modification of this old Navajo idea. This is more comfortable for both mother and baby and does help to avoid some complications of colic. When colic is a real problem with your baby, place two firm pillows beneath the crib mattress at the head end, so that the mattress will be steep enough to raise the baby's head well above the level of his feet, but not so steep that he slides down. He may be more comfortable in this position. Before laying the baby down, be sure to spend enough time holding in an upright position and burping him. Best way is to hold the baby with his head up, applying very gentle pressure to the lower abdomen either with one hand or your shoulder, while gently patting him on the back with the other hand. Remember. Colic 177. When baby cries, he swallows more air. This means he must be calm and composed before being able to expel it. Gently rocking him while walking in the room will help to keep him quiet and thus release the tension in his gastrointestinal system. Bottle-fed babies need more attention. Be sure the nipple is clean and that the hole is neither too large nor too small. A nipple with a large hole will allow him to take too much milk at a time, while the very small hole may cause him to suck extra hard, and this may increase the amount of swallowed air. Rubber nipples with large holes are best discarded. If the hole is too small, it can be enlarged by removing a small portion of the rubber. Persistent crying from colic may mean the baby needs a change of formula, or perhaps some medicine to relax the spasms in his stomach. Talk this over with your doctor. Remember, try to keep the home atmosphere quiet and calm, for all babies react to nervous tension and stress. A quiet, gentle approach to life will do much to solve your problems.